Tyreek Hill burst onto the NFL scene, becoming one of the best receivers in the game. But his path was very different from other stars. From his upbringing to going to junior college before being kicked off a Division I team, Hill had to overcome plenty of adversity on his way to becoming the fastest man in football. Tyreek Hill grew up with a family situation that was so far from normal. He was born in Pearson, Georgia, to teenage parents Derek Shaw and Anisha Sanchez. But neither one was responsible for raising Hill. That duty wound up falling on his grandparents. Virginia and Herman Hill. While having two adults in charge with previous parenting experience seems ideal on paper, Virginia and Herman didn't set the best example for Tyreek. Both of them couldn't stay out of trouble with law enforcement and refused to change their ways even after Tyreek was born. From 1989 to 2016, Herman was a suspect in 15 different criminal cases and convicted several times on theft and burglary charges. Virginia also faced a handful of charges stemming from trespassing, disorderly conduct, and giving false information to a police officer. Despite these issues, Tyreek never took for granted what his grandparents did for him by stepping up and taking him in. So to honor the sacrifices they made, he went on to take his grandparents' last name. And to this day, he refers to them as mom and dad. The reason why Hill eventually became an NFL superstar can be traced all the way back to his high school days. And believe it or not, it doesn't directly involve football. That is Hill running very well. We saw him run a US leading time in the prelim. We'll see what he can pull off here. Tyree Hill crushing it right now. Using the same blazing speed he now relies on to tear up defenses, Hill in high school was a world-class sprinter. At the age of 18, Hill ran the 200 meters in 20.14 seconds, which ranked him sixth in the entire nation. Not only did the time easily qualify him for that year's Olympic trials by nearly half a second, but he also would have made the actual Olympic team if he had run it again at the race trials. However, instead of attending the trials, Hill ran junior nationals and the World Junior Championships. He won the USA Junior Out Outdoor Track and Field Championships titles in the 100 and 200. Then at the World Junior Championships, he finished fourth in the 100 and took home the bronze in the 200. As a senior in high school, Hill also won Georgia State titles in the 100, 200, and long jump. After almost a decade, Hill's love for track and field never faded. In January 2020, ahead of Super Bowl 54, Hill said that he was serious about trying to qualify for the U.S. Olympic track and field team. Even after his world-class speed in high school, Hill was forced to take an alternative path to continue playing football at the next level in college. His speed grabbed the attention of some big-name Division I schools, like Georgia. But after a deeper look, they were scared away. Hill's grades in school were so bad that if these colleges offered him a spot, he wouldn't be able to enroll right away. So in order to continue his football career, he enrolled at Garden City Community College in Kansas. Garden City's head coach Matt Miller said, My dad was a front office executive. I've been around some special athletes, and Tyreek Hill is as dominant an athlete or football player as I've ever been around. Miller's high praise was definitely influenced by Hill's all-around dominant sophomore season for Garden City, where he did it all with 659 rushing yards and 32 receptions for 532 yards. 24-7 Sports rated him as the third-ranked JUCO prospect overall, earning him offers from top programs such as Alabama, Florida State, and Oklahoma State. After committing to Oklahoma State, and getting off to a dream start with the Cowboys, Hill's world was flipped on its side in an instant. In his first season in Stillwater, Hill was a Swiss Army knife doing it all for OSU. He averaged over five yards a carry for 534 rushing yards, caught 31 passes for 381 yards, had 740 kick return yards with two touchdowns, and had 256 punt return yards with one touchdown. His 996 combined return yards were good for second in the nation. And after finishing 11th nationally in all-purpose yards with 1,811, Hill won the Big 12's Offensive Newcomer of the Year award. After such an impressive start to his collegiate career, the sky was the limit for Hill, until it wasn't. Following the conclusion of Oklahoma State's regular season, Hill was dismissed from OSU's football and track teams for a domestic violence arrest that had taken place a few days earlier. Hill never played for the Cowboys again and enrolled at Division II University West Alabama. While West Alabama giving Hill a second chance was crucial for him keeping his football career alive, there was still one more team that needed to do the same. Ahead of the 2016 NFL Draft, Hill was viewed as one of the most interesting prospects. There was no debating that he was an electric factory on the football field, but the issue was he also came with plenty of other baggage from his personal life. 
Teams wrestled with the idea of using a draft pick on him because they knew how valuable he could be for them, but they weren't as sure that he had learned from his mistake. During the draft, 31 teams chose to pass on Hill over and over again as he fell all the way to the 165th overall pick in the fifth round, where the Kansas City Chiefs selected him, giving Tyreek a second chance on the biggest stage of all. Chiefs head coach Andy Reid had a history of taking chances on players with troubled pasts, like when he was the coach of the Eagles and brought in Michael Vick after Vick's dogfighting scandal. Reid and the Chiefs believed in the person Hill was becoming. As he stated, He's trying to do the right things to better himself. A lot of guys don't try to right the wrong. I give the kid credit for doing that. He's really working hard at that. It's safe to say Tyreek paid the Chiefs back in full for the faith they had in him. With Reed and the Chiefs having given Hill a second lease on his football wife, Hill was determined to prove them right by leaving an impact on the local community outside of just his play. So during the 2020 season, Hill began coaching high school football at Lee's Summit North in Summit, Missouri. The head coach at Lee's Summit, Jamar Mosey, couldn't believe it when Hill's agent, Drew Rosenhaus, reached out about the potential of Hill joining the coaching staff as an assistant. Mosey initially thought it was a joke, but soon found out that coaching was something that Hill had wanted to do ever since he was a kid. That season, Hill thrived as the wide receivers coach and earned high praise from Mosey, who said, he doesn't come in there like he's an all-pro, pro bowler, or top 20 player in the league. He just comes in and he's a coach. He's a good communicator. He talks to them, and at the same time, gets on them. I've been very impressed. While the kids loved every second of getting coached up by an NFL star, Hill enjoyed the experience just as much and said that he wants to coach after he retires from playing. But Hill's retirement seems to be way down the line as he hasn't lost a step on the field. His nickname is Cheetah, and it fits perfectly since cheetahs are the world's fastest land animal. Mush! I told you this was <laughs> While there are plenty of players who believe they are the fastest players in the game, only one can definitively say they hold the honor based on actual measurements. In 2016, Amazon's Next Gen Stats first began tracking the fastest ball carriers in the league, and that season during a kickoff return, Hill set a record that still stands to this day as he reached a top speed of 23.24 miles per hour. He is just one of two players to even break the 23 miles per hour mark since the stat has been tracked. Given Hill's track background and countless hours of game tape where he torches opposing secondaries, it shouldn't come as a surprise that he has the fastest on-field speed ever recorded. But it's gotta be nice for Hill to bring it up when doing some trash talk. He can't go on me. They can't press him, He can't go on me. Outside of the trash talk, Hill has leaned heavily on this record-setting speed to get his career off to essentially the perfect start. During his first six seasons in the league, Hill was an absolute nightmare for other teams, catching 479 passes for 6,630 yards and 56 touchdowns. He became one of four players since 1970 with at least six touchdown catches in each of his first six seasons, joining legends Randy Moss, Larry Fitzgerald, and Marvin Harrison. In addition to routinely leaving defenders in in the dust every Sunday and winning a Super Bowl, Hill has made the Pro Bowl in every single year of his career. It's a streak that is not only extremely impressive, but also has zero sign of ending anytime soon. He also has been named first team All Pro in three of those seasons. Along with being nearly unguardable at wide receiver, Hill has been just as unstoppable returning punts. And this did not go unnoticed when the Pro Football Hall of Fame Selection Committee in 2020 voted on the NFL's All Decade team for the 2010s. Despite having played only four seasons that decade, Hill made the all-decade team as a punt returner. During that time, he averaged 11.9 yards per return and had four touchdowns. Realistically, it doesn't get better than a perfect Pro Bowl streak, all-decade team inclusion, and Super Bowl ring in your first six seasons in the league. After a start like that, it was time for Hill to cash in and change the NFL forever. This past offseason, it became clear that he wanted a change of scenery outside of Kansas City. Once the rest of the league found out about this, a bidding war for Hill's services ensued between multiple teams. These teams were desperate to add a one-of-a-kind receiver that typically never makes an appearance on the trade market, and realized the only way to get him would be to break the bank. In addition to giving the Chiefs plenty of draft capital, the team would have to sign Hill to a mega deal. With the Dolphins and Jets both more than willing to do this, Hill chose to take his talents to South Beach. Along with sending the Chiefs five draft picks, the Dolphins signed Hill to a four-year, $120 million extension with $72.2 million guaranteed, making him the highest-paid wide receiver and non-quarterback in league history. 
Hill has become famous and made bank because of his moves on the field, but he didn't stop there. He's now trying to do the same off the field. With Miami serving as his new home, Hill viewed it as the perfect time and place to try to take his athletic brand, Soul Runner, to the next level. This summer, Hill opened a pop-up store in Miami Mall for his brand and hosted a special grand opening that fans flocked to. Soul Runner is described as being motivational in nature and is meant to inspire athletes to battle through adversity and keep pushing forward. Just like Hill has done throughout his life, Hill said, Hard work is contagious. When you push yourself, it pushes others and drives everyone to be better. This is what Soul Runner is all about. I'm still soul running. It never ends.